My name is Jasmine Masters, and no tea, no shade, no pink lemonade, but Snatch Game done fucked up Drag Race. It's true! It's true! It's true! It's, true. it's, li it's Liza! It's true! She's right! Jasmine's right! It's true! It's true! Jasmine! Jasmine! I don't quite know what these other women are talking about, but it's very nice to be invited onto this RuPaul's Drag Race for the Snatch Game. It's true! It's true! It's Snatch Game! It's Snatch Game! <laughs> it's from Jasmine! I, ca I can't feel my feet! It's, it's true! It's true! <laughs> Girl is the kiki. The house don't work. Yes. Girl by all the old shade. Girl, the library is open. Live is the camera. Live. Is the Hello everybody, welcome back to the Kiki, my name is Chris Tessie, thank you so much for joining me again this week for RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9 Review, where we're talking about episode, what is this, 6, Snatch Game. That's right, Snatch Game is back on our screens and it's like the most anticipated 10 minutes of like the entire year. We spend the rest of the 364.9 days of the year waiting for this moment and we've got it and we've had it and now we have to start the process of waiting all over again. First things first, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much. So let's get into this. The girls come back in and Eureka is gone. Obviously a very emotional moment for everyone involved because she just hurt her knee, I thought. But Eureka has an open invitation for next season, so I can't wait to see what she brings back. So as the girls are sitting around, Farah comes for Nina, uh, saying that she's over her apathy and does she really want to be here? Because Nina has said for a, a lot of time now that she's sort of, you know, she's got this paranoia, she's got this sort of feeling of not being welcome uh, in the Atlanta scene, but she needs to remember that she's not in Atlanta anymore. She's in LA shooting a TV show that is like, you know, the Olympics of drag and she hasn't even unpacked. She needs to unpack, she needs to get a shout and she needs to be like, bitch, I'm here. Nina obviously defends herself, but the thing is, it does seem a little hollow just because she does complain a fair bit about sort of not feeling welcome and all that kind of stuff, and the fact that she has not unpacked is not a good sign of how long she's expecting to stay. So for her to then sort of brush it and be like, no, I'm here to compete, and it's like, bitch, you, you, where are you though? Like, I don't see any of your clothes. One has to wonder if she really means it. And I think that is why Farah brought it up, because it's just like, well, hang on a minute, you're saying one thing, but you're doing something else, so what's the tea? Don't get me wrong, I still like Nina, but, you know, there are mixed signals coming from her, no tea, no shade. And by the way, while we're talking about Farah, can we just have a moment, because the bitch cries all the time. She cries on the runway, she cries when she's watching Titanic, she cries when she opens the fridge and realises there's no cake left! So RuPaul comes into the workroom and we have this uber shady moment where he says we need to separate the basic bitches from the fierce queens and after he says basic bitches a picture of Aja appears and after she says fierce queens a picture of Valentina appears and I'm like hmm shady Ru is shady. And by the way while we're talking about it RuPaul is like uber shady this episode like he's constantly coming for Cynthia, uh, he came for Sasha a little bit, obviously coming for Aja a little bit. Um, it's, I'm liking Shady Roo. I'm kind of enjoying this. So Roo announces that we're going to be playing Snatch Game! Yeah! And for the first time in Drag Race history, there is no cutaway from one of the queens saying, this is what I came here to do. So the girls start getting ready, whatever. Roo starts talking to the girls, whatever. Same old stuff. Although, as I said before, there's a little bit of shade thrown at Sasha because she's doing Marlena Dietrich. And Rue's like, can you show me your alternative? It was Judith Butler, I think. And Rue's just like, I'm glad you're doing Marlena. <laughs> just relax, it's not diegetic. That's just a little Archer reference for you. If you picked up on that, well done. So we get to Snatch Game, and I have been waiting for this for the longest time. So let's do a quick run through of who is who on the panel. We have Trinity Taylor as Amanda Lepore. Sasha is Marlena Dietrich. Aja is Alyssa Edwards, which is no surprise because she seems to be copying Violet Chotchke at basically everything. Nina is Jasmine Masters. Farah is Gigi Gorgeous. Stay gorgeous. Alexis is Liza! <laughs> Peppermint is Nini Leaks. Bloop. Valentina is Miss Colombia. Shay is Naomi Campbell. And Cynthia is Sofia Vergiaga Gararara Realness.
So Snatch Game, there's only a few questions, but it's quite funny this year. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Alexis and Marlena are absolutely hilarious. Total knockouts. Sasha's accent is wonderfully funny and her comic timing is just perfection. Alexis does a superb job as Liza Minnelli. And finally, we've got Eliza. Finally! God, it's taken us nine seasons and two All-Stars to finally get Eliza. I actually thought Valentina was really funny as well because, you know, how are you supposed to make Miss Columbia funny? Because all that happened was that she, she lost the crown uh, because of a mix-up of, of results. And she somehow spun that into a fully formed character, so I thought it was very clever of her. Farah was actually, I thought, surprisingly good as Gigi Gorgeous because she looked the part, she had those mannerisms. I mean, I watched Gigi and I was totally getting it. Although Gigi does have a little bit of a sharper wit that Farah could have really used to her, her advantage, I felt that she did a really good job. And what really annoyed me was there was no moment from Jasmine Masters where she's like, RuPaul Drag Race done fucked up drag. I do think though that Nina would have said it, but I do think that the editors would have cut it. So it's a shame that we didn't get to see that because that's one of Jasmine Masters' like most iconic lines. And after all said and done, Cynthia and Peppermint do a pretty bad job of Sofia Vergara and Nene Leakes. And as Trinity Taylor rightfully interrogated, channeling the spirit of Nancy Grace, where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? Where did you hide the jokes? Where are the body of the jokes? So we get to Elimination Day and the girls are getting ready and we have another really big chat in the mirror. I'm sensing a theme. And the girls are basically talking about gender and how fluid it is these days and Peppermint uh, drops into conversation quite casually really that she's a trans woman. Obviously we knew all of this going into the series because she was like the first openly trans contestant. But obviously it was uh, unknown news to some of the others so they were, you know, congratulating her and, uh, you know, saying well done, we support you, etc. And I think it's really nice to see. But and I think it's nice as well that Drag Race is embracing it and allowing, you know, trans contestants to uh, get involved. Because obviously Peppermint's doing drag for like 20 years. So, you know, is she a drag queen? Period. So for the runway, we have Night of a Thousand Madonnas Part 2. Because last season basically fucked it up. Kimono, she better don't. And so for a quick rundown of the runway, the standouts for me were Alexis, Shay, Trinity, Sasha, Farah, and Valentina. I think Valentina has appeared on every standout list of mine so far this whole season. And what was interesting was when Valentina was walking down the runway, I finally was able to place who she reminded me of because like this whole season I've been going, who does Valentina remind me of? And it was this bit where it suddenly dawned on me, she reminds me a little bit of like Jackie O. She's got the poise, she's got the elegance and the way that she paints her face is very similar I think. I could be completely off base, but as she was walking I was like, there we go, that's it, Jackie O. And also while we're talking about Jackie O, how about Jackie O my god, dat ass. Mm -hmm. So the girls come on stage and it's revealed that Shay, Trinity, Aja and Valentina are safe and the rest of the girls are left to be critiqued. The judges are very complimentary about Alexis, saying that they're seeing momentum with her and that to keep it up. I do feel that Alexis has been um, trying to step it up every episode. So, you know, hopefully she can keep that ball rolling. Sasha seems to be really coming into her own now, which is really cool because I think some of her looks have been a little bit... Uh, hodgepodge the last like the first few episodes but now it's like she's really channeling into that thing that she does best which is slightly edgy it's nice to see her sticking to her character really going for it and showing off exactly what makes her her Farah gets complimented on her Madonna look but she gets a pep talk on how to take opportunities because she said she thought there'd be more chances to kind of do her little Gigi shtick um, and they said basically you've got to take every opportunity that is handed to you use it or lose it so Alexis is announced as the winner of Snatch Game and that Peppermint and Cynthia fall into the bottom two. Peppermint, your Nini had sprung a few leaks. Cynthia Lee Fontaine, your Sofia Vergara was Sofia Vergaten. I'm sorry, my dears, but you're both up for elimination. This was an absolutely amazing lip sync. That was a performance. Peppermint ate Cynthia up. She killed it and she pretty much killed Cynthia on the stage as well. And to top it all off, Peppermint has broken the run of bad luck for queens doing the robot. She is now officially the first queen to do the robot and not lose the lip sync. But yeah, this was an absolutely amazing performance from Peppermint. I mean, this is what she does, and this is what she's done for two decades. It was a fun lip sync, it was well thought through, it was very entertaining and very engaging. Bravo Peppermint, brava. 
while we're here though, going forward, we have some amazing lip syncers left in the competition. So the, the next two lip syncs for your lives could be phenomenal. They could be absolutely history making because when you look at the lineup of all the girls that are still left, they are incredible entertainers and we could see some absolutely amazing lip syncs coming up. So when all said and done and the dust has settled, Peppermint wins the lip sync for your life and Cynthia Lee Fontaine unfortunately is told to sashay away again. We will miss Cynthia and we will always miss her cuckoo. So that was the episode guys. What did you think of it? Obviously one of the most anticipated episodes of the season. Did Snatch Game live up to your expectations? Also, I would love to know, if you were on Snatch Game, who would be your celebrity of choice? Leave me a comment below telling me which celebrity you would impersonate, and I'd love for you to answer this question as well. Fat Fanny is so fat, every time she steps on the scales, it says blank. Let me know how your character would answer in the comments below. But yeah, so that is everything, guys. I really enjoyed the episode. I thought the Snatch Game was very funny. Total standouts for me were Sasha and Alexis. They did an absolutely incredible job. And I cannot wait to see what comes along next week. If you've enjoyed this video, please drop me a thumbs up. Uh, and also, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. It does mean a lot to me, so thank you very much. Follow me on social media. I'm on basically everything. Search for Chris Says It, you should find me. But until next time, guys, be good, be safe, keep out of trouble, stay fierce, stay fabulous, turn the party. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Take care. Love you. Bye. 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 <laughs> so I managed to get everything into one little Primark bag. Obviously, I did visit Primark. I pretty much live in there at the moment because their t-shirts are on point.